The year is 2028. A team of oceanic researchers working for a deep-sea drilling company are stationed at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth. When a mysterious earthquake devastates their facility, they are forced to evacuate to the surface. As the movie opens, we see Nora at an underwater research facility, where she discovers a spider in the basin while brushing her teeth. She carefully moves it to safety using tissue paper and proceeds to wash up. As she sits down to wear her shoes, she hears the sound of leaking water and rushes to investigate. Nora quickly locates the source and realizes that the walls of the structure have burst open, causing water to flood in. She raises the alarm and warns the others about the breach before running to a safe area with Rodrigo. Nora and Rodrigo attempt to close the door, but Nora's keypad is inoperable. She decides to hack into the system, and just as she's about to close the door, they notice more survivors running towards them. Nora and Rodrigo yell at them to hurry, but Rodrigo realizes that they are not going to make it. He yells for Nora to shut the door, and she eventually does so, but the shock wave of the explosion knocks them out. When Nora awakens, she finds Rodrigo unconscious beside her. They try to contact headquarters, but receive no response. They decide to head to the pod bays for evacuation, and on their way, they encounter Paul pinned under rubble. They quickly pull them out and continue on together, passing through a tiny tunnel where they see one of their deceased colleagues buried under rubble. Upon arriving at their destination, they discover that all the pods are gone, but the captain is still there. Nor is confused about why the captain didn't evacuate, but he explains that he stayed behind because that's what captains are supposed to do. The captain tends to Nora's wounds and calms her down as she freaks out due to the sudden chaos. They decide to go to the control room, where they discover Emily and Smith, among other survivors. The captain orders Nora to inspect the engine's core, and when she returns, she informs them of the unstable core caused by overheating. Emily's panic causes confusion among them, leading to arguments. The captain makes the decision to head to Roebuck, the nearby station, using pressurized suits. Nora thinks the idea is insane because of the distance, but the captain explains that they have no other choice. During their discussion, they receive a radio transmission from one of the lost stations. They decide to go with the captain's plan while wearing the pressurized suits. Emily continues to panic, but Smith comes over to calm her down. As they all suit up and head over to the entrance to proceed to Roebuck, the captain warns everyone to hold on tight because the pressure will hit them hard. However, as they wait, Rodrigo's helmet begins to crack. It appears that his suit is defective, and when the door is opened, the pressure causes Rodrigo's helmet to implode, killing him instantly. The remaining characters are terrified as they make their way down to the elevator. Emily begins to cry, while Nora maintains a blank expression in shock. The captain comforts Nora and urges her to continue, but Emily tells Smith in the elevator that she has never seen anyone die before. Smith responds that he has seen people die, but not implode. As they descend, they receive a distress signal from an evacuated pod beneath them. The captain orders Paul and Smith to search the pod for any survivors. While Paul and Smith are getting ready to go out and check the pod, Emily asks the captain if he is married. He tells her that he is and has a 14-year-old daughter. But Nora corrects him, saying that his daughter is the same age as her. The captain angrily responds that she is 14 years old, leaving Nora puzzled. Paul and Smith set out to check for survivors in the pod, but they don't see the pod when they arrive at their destination. Nora and the captain advise them to return, stating that it's too dangerous. However, Paul eventually finds the pod, which is in utter disarray. Upon closer inspection, they discover that it is covered in some kind of slime, but Emily believes it might be alga. While inspecting the pod, they come across the person's wallet. When they find the body, they discover a strange creature feeding on the corpse. The creature unexpectedly attacks Paul and Smith, but they manage to kill it and bring it aboard for examination. Emily examines the creature and concludes that it is possibly a new species. Suddenly, the station's power goes out, leaving them in the dark. The captain tells them not to panic and asks Nora to switch gears to neutral. They make their way through the ocean floor, but the Kepler station explodes above them, showering them with debris. As they all scramble to avoid the falling debris, Smith is struck by one of the pieces, damaging his oxygen tank and allowing fumes to flood his suit. They manage to make it to the intermediate station, where Smith barely survives after removing his helmet. 
they decide to take a cart through a tunnel to the next station. They'd all board the cart and begin driving towards the station, but their journey is cut short when they come across a large body of water that the cart cannot cross. They decide to walk the remaining distance until they reach a dead end. The entrance has been blocked by debris and or volunteers to check for a possible underwater passage, since she is the smallest among them. After successfully navigating through a narrow passage, she instructs them to cross as well. Emily goes through the passage followed by the captain, while Smith prepares to go next. Paul sees one of the creatures in the water and tells Smith that they are going together. Smith gets to the other side first, but Paul doesn't merge, so they begin to pull the line attached to his suit. Eventually they get into the other side, but not for long. The creature starts pulling Paul back violently, and during the chaos, Paul gives Nora his teddy bear and requests his helmet before the creature drags him down. Nora quickly puts on his helmet before he gets pulled back underwater, but the strength of the creature tears Paul out through his suit, causing blood to engulf the suit. This gruesome sight terrifies the rest, and they start to rush to the nearest bulkhead. When they hit the bulkhead, everyone sits in silence, shocked at what just happened. Emily believes they brought it on themselves because they had no business digging this deep into the ocean. The captain notices a crack on the window of the bulkhead and informs everyone that they have to keep moving. Nor mentions Smith's oxygen tank being in poor condition, but the captain inspects it and decides to continue anyway because they have no other choice. As they set out to cross the ocean floor, they spot a creature speed right past them. They try to turn off all the lights and stay still but the creature appears and drags Smith inside a narrow cave. The captain connects his line to Nora and rushes after Smith, crawling deep inside the cave. As the captain reaches Smith, he notices that he is still alive and begins to pull him out. In the process, he drops his gun, and as he goes after it, the creature grabs him and Nora, dragging them away and eventually dropping them on a platform. The captain is left dangling from the side, and Nora is about to help him when the creature suddenly appears and begins to approach her, trying to swallow her whole. Nora begins stabbing it with her knife, causing the creature to jump off the platform and drag them down into the depths of the ocean. Realizing that they will both implode from the pressure, the captain releases himself from Nora, and seconds later, she watches in shock as he implodes. Nora awakens after briefly losing consciousness to find her suit malfunctioning. After being startled by an octopus, she runs away and finds a door that leads into the deserted Shepherd Station. After sobbing over her commander's death, she changes into dry clothes and begins searching the station. She finds the captain's locker and goes through it, discovering a picture of his 14-year-old daughter. She learns that she had passed away, which explains why the captain yelled at her about her age. In an effort to survive, she dons a fresh suit and grabs a flare gun before heading back to the ocean floor in an attempt to reach the Roebuck, as they had originally planned. Moving forward, she hears Emily's voice in the distance and rushes to her, which leads Emily to believe Nora is one of the creatures and attempts to flee. Nora discovers that Liam is with her as well. She jumps on her and comforts her, expressing her admiration for her ability to survive. As they resume walking, they drag Liam across the floor while conversing to distract themselves from their anxious thoughts. Nora tells Emily about her fiancé, who happens to be Liam's best friend, and went missing while on a solo diving excursion. They eventually come across the illuminated Roebuck station. When they enter, they discover a nest of the creatures suspended from the ceiling, seemingly hibernating. They attempt to sneak past after turning off their suit lights. Lights. But when Emily's oxygen alarm goes off, Nora is grabbed by one of the creatures as it awakens. She instructs Emily to grab Liam, and rush towards the door. The creature viciously attacks Nora, beating her repeatedly and trying to swallow her whole. But she manages to shoot the creature with her flare gun, killing it instantly. Nora prepares a second flare as the other creatures start to awaken, only to find that something enormous is suddenly lifting them. When Nora fires her flare gun, she sees a massive creature and understands that these are just the babies. After a brief period of shock, she begins to flee, but the massive creature lands behind her causing a fierce wave that knocks her out. Fortunately, Emily grabs her and carries her into the station. When Nora's oxygen runs out and her helmet becomes jammed, Emily grabs a fire extinguisher and uses it to break the helmet, allowing Nora to resume breathing. 
They help Liam remove his suit before sprinting down several corridors until they reach the control room, where they can see the creature through the window. Before directing her crewmates to the pod bay, Nora uses the computer to check the station map. The emergency system begins flooding the station and locking doors, but they manage to navigate after avoiding several oncoming waves. When they reach the pod bay, Nora doesn't let the others know that just two of the three evacuation pods are operational. When it's Emily's turn, she refuses to enter the pod after learning that Nora's pod is not functional. They place Liam in the first pod and eject him up with Paul's stuffed bunny because they are running out of time. Nora smacks Emily and forces her in the pod. Before sending her out, she assures her that everything will be okay. Although Nora has accepted her fate, she becomes concerned when she learns that the creatures are pursuing the pods. In the final moments of her life, she devises a plan. Nora uses the computer to start an overload of the robot's nuclear corpse. After recalling Emily's statement that the stations had a lot of collected energy but nowhere to go, this causes a massive explosion, killing her and all the creatures, while allowing the pods to escape safely. In the aftermath, the news reports that the information of the incident is classified, and no one is allowed to speak with the survivors due to their intention to rebuild and continue drilling. The corporation declines government assistance with the investigation. And with this, the movie comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed the recap. For more, please don't forget to like and subscribe.